What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 104 and we start today's episode off with the second leg of the Champions League round of 16 here against Spurs at White Hart Lane. Now of course the first leg El Sardinero in Spain finished as a goalless draw. So coming into this game, despite the fact we knew it would probably be a lot more difficult as don't forget in that game Spurs did go down to 10 men in the first half. I was still fancying our chances of pulling off a bit of an upset here as we travel to take him on here in London. As you can see by the team as well, there were a couple of changes due to the fact we had that game against Barcelona on the weekend. A lot of players were tired coming into this one, so despite Morata returning from injury and playing really well, he did not play in this game. The first chance fell to Spurs though in the 37th minute. Doombia's shot goes wide to post and behind, and just a couple minutes later, Spurs come forward again with Eric Lamella getting on the ball, playing it through towards the man who just took that shot, Doombia. He plays it back towards Lamella, Lamella back to Doombia. He crosses the ball to the far post, and unfortunately for us, we do concede for the first time in this tie. Nasa Chadley, the Belgian, makes it 1-0, six minutes before the break, and what a strike it was. Doombi has crossed to the far post, found the Belgian, and as soon as it fell to him, I thought he was going to take a touch, dribble inside, and then shoot, but he thought, nope, I'm going to go for a first-time volley on the right foot, and what a strike it was. Past Ruben Blanco. Whenever a goalkeeper gets beat at the near post, I always question whether they could have done better, but for that goal, there's nothing that Blanco could have done about it. A superb strike, and it's 1-0 to Spurs, but to be honest, for the entire game, I was having a mare. I couldn't do anything. Thing. I could barely keep hold of the ball, which is a real surprise, considering usually how good I am at playing possession football with this team. I was giving the ball away a lot. I didn't really know how to break down Spurs' solid defence until the 84th minute, when I threw on, guess who, off the bench, Ruano Delgado, launched a crossing with Carver Howe down the right-hand side, and the big man off the bench, well, six foot two man off the bench, heads the ball in off the inside of that far post. Larissa at full stretch couldn't get there, and it's Spurs 1, Racing Santana and their one and the importance of that goal is because it's an away goal Spurs didn't score any El Sardinero that means as things stand we are going through on the away goal ruling and Spurs almost got themselves a goal back here but Alvin Toza makes a superb block to deny Chadley his second goal of the game and in the 90th minute here Spurs were pushing so many bodies forward looking for the goal to put themselves back in front they couldn't really get it though they kept on giving the ball away as Rana Delgado the hero goes down the left hand side and takes on Yedlin beats the rapid American keeps on going cuts past him the right back's all at sea cuts inside of a ball roll and shoes. It takes a deflection off Fazio and almost goes in, but it does go over the bar. And from the resulting corner, Moy Gomez crosses the ball into the centre, looking for Danny Carver Howe, but Lloris punches the ball away. It drops to Alban Toza, the big man, on the edge of the area. His strike takes a deflection and goes just wide of the post. But it was how the game would finish. Spurs won, Racing Santander won, and that means that due to the away goal, we are going through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. And I've got to say, it was one of the worst Champions League ties I've ever played. I mean, seriously, the first leg being a goalless draw. The second leg, I mean, there was barely any chances whatsoever. How on earth there were two goals and I've got no idea because both teams were shocking. But we're through. We are through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League and I know I've said it about a thousand times, but that is the importance of grabbing away goals and not conceding at home in European knockout ties. Uh, still following that, we take on uh, Austria, actually. We take on Austria. I almost said take on Spain. We take on Austria here for the second game of today's episode, the second of three games in today's episode. And this is our first game with Spain. So I'm absolutely delighted to be playing my first game with Spain here in these European qualifiers. As you can see currently Spain have a perfect record. Six wins out of six games. So obviously now I've taken over from Del Bosque I've got to match that record. I've got to keep on winning with the Spanish national team. And as for the squad I'm going to be picking, well I am going to chop and change it every now and then. I don't think I'm going to have a set squad of 23 players who pretty much always make the squad. I'm going to chop and change it. I'm going to give opportunities to younger players. As I mentioned before, I'm not just going to call up every single Racing Santander player right from the off but there will be some Racing Santander players making a squad if they've deserved it so coming into this game the first chance would fall to us here in the seventh minute after some nice build-up Juan Mata takes the ball around David Alaba crosses the ball into the far post and picks out Pedro and his header goes just over the bar and behind for a goal kick so first chance coming to us and of course failure to win this game would be pretty much disastrous in our opening game with Spain but Austria did have a good chance here as Weinman strikes the ball from just outside the area it does go over the bar but had he held the ball up there there was a man who could have been running through if he would have waited for his run, but it was still nil-nil. In the 30th minute, there was Mata cuts inside from the right-hand side here. He goes through one-on-one -on -one and does actually open the scoring for us. But I will say the goalkeeper should have done an awful lot better with that. Mata, the Manchester United man, does make it Spain 1, Austria nil. But as you'll see on the replay, as Mata cuts inside from the right-hand side, first the defence is really, really poor. But as Mata shoots, it's pretty much straight at the goalkeeper. It's a really solid, uh, a solid height for him. And he doesn't get any gloves on it and just goes into the far 
far corner. And it's Spain 1, Austria 0. On a stroke of half time, though, another good chance for Austria as they cross this ball in towards the centre. And Arnautovic wins the header. And David De Gea has to make a very good save and keep it at 1 0. So a good stop by the goalkeeper there. And we still have the lead. And just past the hour mark, again, Austria come forward. They were actually playing much better than us in this game as they work their way inside the area here. Baumgartner takes a strike, but it goes just over the bar and behind for a goal kick. So chances for Austria to grab themselves an equaliser in this game. They just weren't taking the opportunities they had, and they did have quite a few of them. But in the 69th minute, Diego Costa wins the ball back here and takes, a mat, takes it around his man, goes through and shoots. The goalkeeper saves it, though, and Austria clear. So a great chance for us to seal the game there and make it 2-0, but Costa couldn't oblige with the finish. In the 74th minute, though, it was still 1-0, and Austria sort of ran out of steam, to be honest. And as Costa lays off towards Iniesta here, Iniesta fake shots around his man, plays a great through ball into Pedro, and again, the goalkeeper has to make a very good save before Austria get the ball away. But as they give it away here, Costa gets tackled, and the referee ends up giving us a free kick here, uh, just down the right-hand side of the edge of the area. It's David Silvery stands over it, swings in the cross, looks for the big man, Diego Costa, in the centre, and Costa powers in a header, and the Brazilian-born Spanish striker makes it Spain 2, Austria 0. So, Spain 2, Austria 0, with just under 15 minutes to go, and we are going to claim the three points in our first game with Spain, and that's fantastic. I mean, you know, failure to win this game, it honestly would have been disastrous. You know, six wins out of six, haven't conceded a single goal, Spain, uh, under Del Bosco in these uh, Del Bosque in these qualifiers. If I came in and we failed to win or even just conceded a goal, I would have been really, really annoyed to know we got off to a, a start which hasn't matched what Del Bosque has been doing. But thankfully for us, the final chance did fall here. This header goes wide at the post and behind for a goal kick by Austria. And it was how the game would finish. So it wasn't exactly the most convincing of wins. Austria did have a lot of chances and probably more than us, to be honest. But we dominated a possession in the game. And I think, to be honest, like once we got the goal from Mata, even though Austria had a lot of chances after that, I, could, I, can, I still couldn't see us uh, conceding and losing or, or just failing to win the game to be honest so I'm pleased to get the win on our opening game with Spain and that's fantastic we've pretty much already qualified for the European Championships but it's still important to know we did get the win and we do carry on the winning run that Del Bosque has had with this Spain squad until I've been given a job uh, still following out a scout report we didn't sign any players we did take a look at quite a few of them uh, to be honest I as I mentioned before I don't really think that any player we get now will have a long enough career to actually get into the Spain and the Racing Santander first team in the future but we're still going to send our scout out anyway so even if the players he does pick up just turn out to be fringe players for Racing Santander in the future, they might be young, they might have decent potential, and it will still be interesting just to check on them really, won't it? But there you go. Uh, still, we take on the Republic of Ireland for the second, uh, sorry, the third and final game of today's episode, and our second game with Spain away from home. Taking on Ireland, as you can see by the group right now, Ireland are in second. Of course, we are top with seven wins out of seven. So coming into this game, in order for Ireland to get themselves back, uh, sorry, in order, to, in order for Ireland to actually top this uh, group, they have to win their remaining three games and we have to lose our remaining three games so Ireland would be going for it right from kickoff the first chance fell there but that header hit the bar and De Gea caught the rebound and just before half time we had a good chance here to make it 1-0 as Hesse Rodriguez plays a 1-2 with Paco Alcacer of course we had a few Racing Santander players starting this game Grimaldo, Carvajal, Carlos Blanco and this man Hesse Rodriguez who turns the defender with a bird spin and shoots but Henderson makes a great save and as the day tries to get it away it does go out for a corner so good stop by the goalkeeper there would love to see a Racing Santander player scoring for Spain that would be very nice indeed but good stopped by the goalkeeper and from the corner Koke crossed the ball towards Javi Martinez and his head hits the top of the bar and Ireland let the ball go out for a goal kick so still 0-0 in this game and there were 10 changes made to the squad only David De Gea started from the team that played against Austria so obviously as I said I'm going to give uh, game time to a lot of fringe players and see how they do change the formation around as well the first formation was a 4-5-1 now we're playing a 4-2-2-2 and as you can see we did take the lead just uh, after the second half started we played the ball through towards Paco Alcacer definitely a possible signing uh, for Racing Santander with us in the summer transfer window. He looks very good indeed because we did have him in West Orange Albion for a bit until we left to PSG. He's a very decent striker and that's a really nice finish with the outside of the right boot. Puts it into the bottom corner and makes it Ireland nil, Spain 1. So Paco Alcacer gets the goal there and we do take the lead in this game. And 10 minutes after the restart here, Ireland had a great chance to make it 1-1 but David De Gea makes a good stop at his near post and keeps us in the lead in this game. So De Gea is going to keep his place in goal ahead of Gaita despite Gaita being two ratings higher as I do seem to prefer him as a goalkeeper. And from this corner he does catch the uh, cross into the box and kicks it out wide towards Paco Alcacer. Alcacer takes it around his man. He has a man in support in Ade. Ade then takes it around his man with a double step over. He keeps on going down the right-hand side. Tries to take a shot after he uh, beats the last man, but plays it inside towards Alcacer instead. And the shot goes over and behind for a goal kick. It was how the game would finish, though. Ireland nil, Spain won. So two wins out of two. No goals conceded. And the winning streak continues with Spain as we are now manager. So very pleased to win our opening two games with Spain. And very pleased to go through to the next round of Champions League with Racing Santander. 
as well. All in all, I'm just very pleased. But that is going to end the episode. So as always, guys, a big thank you for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the episode, please leave a like, and I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country very soon.